Donnie here down at Preschool at Occupy Sydney where we've been exploring a whole lot of really cool stuff today and we started off with a session that I was facilitating around asset mapping. It sounds like a big word, it doesn't mean how many McMansions you own or how many cars you, you've got in your, uh, in your basement or your garage. What it means in the community space is actually looking at the existing strengths and resources that an individual project, individual themselves or group actually has at their disposal either now or in the future. And what's great about this approach is that if you think about it in terms of the, the kinds of things that all of us are accumulating on a daily basis, there are a whole lot of passions, knowledge, skills, resources, networks, access to, to support, etc. that we're all accumulating at any point in time. And if you have a small group of say four or five people, I would contend that there's actually more resources within that group if you harness them fully than are needed to address any social challenge uh, whatsoever. So we were looking at this and saying the typical kind of meeting or government project or private approach to, to a challenge etc is to look at the problem first, problem solution kind of pathology as I call it. And that means that you get into a meeting room and you say alright what are we going to talk about or well, what's the problems we're going to deal with today. The asset-based approach that I've worked with in, with a number of communities in Australia and also overseas says, okay, a group of people get together and they've got a broad intention around something, but what they do first is they actually look at what are the things that we have within our resource base to begin with. And that might be your social media reach, that might be about the actual resources, someone might be able to do photocopying, someone's got a passion around music or, or art or, uh, or engaging with people from... Uh, from different ethnic backgrounds, etc. All of these are things, assets that don't often get brought out until you've actually had the discussion, which often is political and divisive around the problems, so to speak. What I found with this process, this asset mapping process, is if you start with what works and what's already there in terms of your existing strengths, the trust levels just skyrocket. People are so much more willing to work with each other when they're, when they're coming from that space of what I'm passionate about, what I've got some knowledge around, what I've got some skills around. And so we're actually looking at, uh, for example, these are some of the things that that, uh, that are things that emerge in this in one way to do an asset mapping process. So you start off often with the hard stuff. What are people passionate about? Because in this day and age, people seem a bit reticent to talk about what they've got knowledge or skills around. It seems a bit arrogant, etc. But if you start off with what people are passionate about, you actually tap into the hard stuff where, where people feel more comfortable, it seems, with sharing stuff. So you might say, you know, I'm passionate about futures beyond economic growth. And you might then want to share that with the group in terms of how, how much you're willing to share that passion with other people. I use a little traffic light system here with this one. Green uh, being full time, uh, orange or yellow being part time, and then red being uh, just emergency or casual basis. And there are all these different ways that you can map these assets. With this one, with this process, for example, you can put these things down on, on sticky notes and then put them up on a wall and if you, you've created an amazing asset map of, of a group that you may have, uh, 10 minutes earlier, have just been strangers with. So that's the, the asset mapping process from one angle. You can apply it to the way you give talks, to the way that you write books, to the way that you write articles. Start off with something positive and the psychology associated with that is people are more willing to engage with you and to let down their defences if you start off with something that's working or in which they can have a smile after reading a first sentence or, or listening to your first words.